Thank you, Schengen and uh, Shahidi, for, thank you for inviting me. I, I, uh, when I was asked to, to come, I was wondering uh, in, uh, from which perspective you know, I should be speaking. You know, I'm from Africa, but I work on South Asia. Yeah, so <laughs> so I, I decided to, um, to focus on South Asia because that's where you know, most of my work is, uh, is happening, a lot of, with my colleagues, and we're actually uh, discussing this topic. So I put down a few slides. A lot of it you recognize uh, there will be some, quite some similarity interface with uh, what Shahidi presented and also uh, Tom. I'll go fast so that we can uh, you know, have time for, for discussion. But basically, uh, as, as um, it was said earlier, in the case of South Asia, the issue about um, fertilizer is started like in the 70s when uh, the donors uh, agreed to provide support for uh, uh, India in particular and other countries in the region to boost uh, agricultural productivity. So there's a long story there about um, bringing, uh, providing support for minimum packages to improve ag uh, productivity. Now the question is that uh, it's, it was not all that bad because you know we have had some very good um, uh, uh, impact. So clearly we have had some good evidence that combination of seed, water, fertilizer will actually has help to increase uh, food production. And uh, we can uh, see that with the total for the productivity graph I'm going to show later, where what has happened in the 70s, 80s, 90s, before uh, the, the growth rate started to decline. So it wasn't all that good, uh, that bad, but also it was not all good either, uh, as uh, Shaidi also said. Uh, clearly there was some distortion. You have had cases where energy subsidies you know, went to uh, irrigate farmers at the expense of the dryland farmers, as you have seen that, most of them, you know, and also the focus was more on the large uh, uh, farmers. So uh, the biggest problem was that um, over time, the, the, the farmers were not willing to adopt, you know, uh, uh, input without the subsidies, and even today in South Asia and India in particular. So this graph here shows basically, uh, and Alejandro and others can recognize that, um, what you know, the, the TFP looked like. I mean, the total growth of output over the years can be explained entirely by the use of inputs with marginally little uh, explained by TFP, basically, by research and, uh, and extension. So, so the, the knowledge that went in is not as much as the total input, as you can see, the blue and, uh, and, uh, and, and green, green graph. What are the challenges that uh, 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 the region faces, basically? And the graph was presented earlier. It is a big burden on the public expenditure. And I'm going to show you some, some numbers uh, in a few uh, minutes. There's also the poor targeting. That I said earlier that uh, there's been a focus on large farmers at the expense of uh, the, the, the small ones, and also a focus on irrigated agriculture at the expense of the dry land agriculture. Another a big challenge is the long-term impact on the environment and productivity, because that's something that often we have ignored over the, um, over, over the years. So those, this graph here shows basically the disproportion between uh, uh, the money that goes to subsidies as, as compared to the money that goes to overall budget of ministries and also public investment on, the, uh, on your right. So it's several fold. The subsidy, the monies that go subsidy are, are several fold larger than you know the, the budget for, for agriculture for the ministry and then for the um, public investment, and it also concurs with uh, the uh, the graph uh, presented earlier by uh, by um, by Shahidi. and 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 again this is another way of presenting the work of uh, Schengen, you know Golatia Torat. I mean again where they have shown that. Uh, uh, even if at the beginning support in fertilizers and input services uh, uh, was quite rewarding uh, over the years it has reversed and support for road education you know irrigation and so on were providing are provide more return uh, than positive return than the uh, the subsidies like the fertilizer and then the power subsidies um, now, here I said it earlier. Um, the 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 subsidies 
that the, the services that have been provided for inputs are missing target in the region. In actual fact, it is the fertilizer industry that's benefiting from the services much more than the, 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 the farmers, okay? And as you will see also uh, later, the larger farmers are the one actually benefiting from that. In terms of uh, the uh, fiscal impact, uh, clearly it, it, it is a drain on the budget of the governments. Uh, and in India, for, for, uh, for example, because of the high support for urea, and it's provided now some uh, decreased marginal return to productivity gains. Uh, Ariana and um, uh, Western uh, UP in India, for instance, uh, the incentive there is actually to grow rice, which is, you know, water absorbing, you know, we call it water guzzling, uh, and at the expense of high value, you know, agriculture because of the services that are being provided uh, in, uh, in that part of the, the country. And it currently is creating a lot of uh, health and other uh, problems that uh, we are not looking at. Another issue that we keep, uh, uh, we also need to keep in mind is the power subsidies in um, uh, in South Asia and India being the lead in the lead. About um, agriculture used like 30% of electric supply at no cost. If you are a farmer and you know you you can get really electricity almost free of charge. So the incentive there is that we cannot be surprised that this subsidy that's, that, uh, that, that the farmers are receiving for electricity is actually causing a lot of groundwater to be uh, exploited. And the, the interesting fact is that actually every farmer benefits from the electricity subsidy, okay, about 88% of that. So, so we cannot be surprised about the consequence of what's happening. What we need to um, uh, take into account is that uh, we need to, is the human factor of it, okay? So, uh, the, the, the fact that, uh, that we, we see, you know, like farmers at the head, you know, and that, that are actually benefiting from the fertilizers at the expense of the, the farmers that are actually at the tail end is not surprising. Uh, we are not, also should not be surprised about the fact that uh, the power subsidies are also contributing to the falling of the water tables, and also the credit is creating a big fiscal cost, creating a behavioral problem. And in 1989, for instance, uh, the government had to come in to help some farmers actually pay a lot of their debt as a result of uh, of, uh, of a borrowing. One is, one thing that uh, I think we need to keep in mind, uh, um, and, uh, and uh, which is worse in South Asia compared to Africa, is really the political aspect of it. And we, being in the World Bank, it is something that we are not actually touching. It is a highly political, uh, uh, politically uh, charged topic, and, and uh, politicians need that. So we are not at the same level with the politicians because they need that to be able to win their vote. And mostly that's what they propose to be able to, to get elected. So for even though the Ministry of Finance sees that one as a big deal and they keep talking about it all the time in the five-year plans that they propose, they keep talking about that, but they cannot do anything with it. Really, they cannot. And, and in our dialogue, it's not even a topic that we usually touch because I mean, India, for instance, is full of eminent scientists. They know about the topic, they know the issues, and they are aware of it. It's just a difficult thing to do. I mean, here we talk about 21 billion, okay, uh, which is about 22% 20, of the budget fiscal deficit as a result of the use of, of, um, of, of subsidies. What we, my colleagues and I, we are thinking is that, and also I think uh, our colleagues at IFPRI, that um, we need to change the conversation a little bit, okay? We need to be able to, uh, rather than, you know, um, advocating or, you know, telling them, giving them those numbers which, that they're aware of, we need to be able to continue to quantify the detrimental impact of you know, the subsidies. So for instance, if we can show how much groundwater is being exploited in Ariana, Western UP and other states in India, as a result of the use of fertilizer and creating problems of water use for other 
uh, sectors like the urban area, the industry, they can understand that. Okay, that's that's one. So how can we work on institution for water management? The environmental consequences of you know water tables is also a topic that we need to uh, to talk about. And for us economists, uh, we also need to continue to talk about the impact of the subsidies in terms of um, uh, not 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 looking at the input output type of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of argument, but look at it from a broader scale level. I mean, at the macro level, district, state, and country, what's happening, okay? And continue to have that uh, kind of, uh, of, uh, of conversation. So a lot of continued research is needed, dialogue, discussion, showing this kind of, uh, of, uh, of message in terms of uh, scientifically based information can actually uh, change the, 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 the course of things. Thank you very much.